Chapter 8, A Bridesmaid Short To say I was a tomboy as a kid would be an understatement. Having three older brothers lends itself to that. I often wore hand-me-downs. There were Larry Legend t-shirts along with other Boston Celtics greats, and many pairs of sweatpants. Tons and tons of sweatpants. My attire was not the only thing that perpetuated my narrative. My hair played a big part, too, perhaps even more so. While women with short hair have become mainstream today, back in 1985, it was still surprising for a young girl. But I hated long hair. What was the point? I was always playing sports and wearing it back, so why not just cut it off? I also had a small face, or so I was told, and my thick head of hair hit it. But so, too, I would come to learn, did my short hair. Being a tomboy wasn't a bad thing. I identified as an athlete, and there was no place in my life for dresses or makeup. I remember hating my first communion because my mother wouldn't just let me wear sweatpants to the ceremony. A foofy white dress, frilly socks, and patent leather shoes, my nightmare. But regardless of my personal comfort with my short hair, my narrative would begin to take a sharp turn from tomboy to lesbian. There were gay slurs thrown my way while I walked across the cafeteria in high school. Classmates incessantly questioned me about boys I might like, none of which I did, but not because I wasn't interested in them, but because they weren't interested in me. I tried desperately to change people's opinions of me. I decided that perhaps I could at least do so by showing my peers I wasn't just a sports junkie, but a girly girl too. In fourth grade, I tried out for our school play. Unfortunately, my plan was foiled when I was merely cast as Mickey Mouse in a dance scene where everybody and everything was looking for the main character, Rebecca. I got a second wind of hope when after one of the yellow dress girls was missing, the parents decided to dress me up in her place. This is it. You're going to be in a beautiful yellow dress right up in front of the stage. Just you and a few other girls. You're going to look beautiful and no one will doubt you again, I told myself. But my dream of finally showing the girl I was immediately turned into a nightmare when while standing in my spot on stage, the audience was audibly pointing and laughing at me. Running off stage in tears, I got to the bathroom only to discover that the parents, in their rush to get me into the yellow dress and out on stage, had forgotten to remove my black Mickey Mouse nose. So much for changing the narrative, my inner voice laughed. I finally came to the decision that growing my hair out was the only way I could possibly remove the incorrect labels placed upon me. During the soccer season in my junior year, the game against our rivals had to be postponed due to an investigation. The night before, as a matter of tradition, our opponents trashed our home field, the location of our game. But this time, several players had been suspended for the act. There was no team to play. As I stood in the cafeteria listening to our coach's explanation, I felt the eyes of 25 girls looking right through me. In addition to trashing our field, the coach explained, the girls also vandalized it with spray paint, writing, number nine is a dyke, all over the place, on the bleachers, the benches, the track, in the grass. Maintenance is working to cover all of it up, and the police are investigating. Number nine is a dyke. It's true, isn't it? Aren't you a lesbian? Everyone else thinks so, so you must be, right? My inner voice had become the Christine is gay spokesperson. I had thought for years I must be because everyone was always telling me I was, but I never felt that way. I never even considered the fact that I might be a lesbian. But the truth was, I couldn't deal with the bullying anymore. Not only was I getting it from my own classmates, now I was getting it from opponents on the field too. I couldn't fight my inner voice anymore. I decided I wouldn't cut my hair again. By my senior year, I had long hair and had to pull it back into a ponytail for sports. In my head, I dusted my hands off. The bullying was done. On to the next thing. The long hair wouldn't last. Following the sports season as a senior, I cut it again. I decided to find a happy medium and kept it longish. I still had enough hair to push behind my ears and flick out of my eyes. I would keep it about this length for nearly seven years, when at the age of 25, I was asked to be in a wedding.